What's up everyone? It's a knife style here and today I'm going to be doing my full review on the Spyderco Chaparral. So this is one of my newest Spydercos. I've owned it for a while, probably two or three months. Um, for those two or three months, I haven't really carried it as much, but I've had a month of solid use carrying a uh, sharpening or two and lots of stroppings with it. Um, so yeah, I think I have enough to do it, my full review on it. So let's go ahead and get into it. The overall anatomy of this knife, it's got a CTS XHP blade made in Spyderco's Taichung Taiwan factory. It's a back lock um, with FRN handle scales, two-way reversible pocket clip, and it comes in at about $116 last time I checked. So for Spyderco prices, not too expensive. I think the PM2 and the Manix are getting in that 160, 170 range. I'm not as refreshed on the prices though um, recently just because I already had those knives, so I'm not looking to buy them again. But anyway, let's do some size comparisons because I think that that would be actually beneficial for you guys. So first, let's do between a, this and a PM2, one of the more owned Spydercos. It's PM2, definitely bigger overall. And then pair of three. And there is a bit of an illusion because my background is slanted but this is holding them up similarly here's a native which these two are very similar i really like both of them um native's a little bit bigger though in overall length and um, length this way i guess width um, also the sage which is a similar size to the native and the pair three but if you guys have it here it is and then one that the chaparral is actually bigger than the dragonfly. Some people might choose to carry a chaparral as their second knife. A lot of people do that with the dragonfly. I actually will do that sometimes with the dragonfly, but most of the time I don't carry knives as I don't carry two knives just because usually if my one knife I'm carrying doesn't fulfill all my knife needs, I will just carry a different knife, uh, one that does. And this one, every time I've carried it, it has been the only knife in my pocket. So let's get into the looks of this knife. Um, this is very subjective, but I think the looks are overall really good, especially compared to something like the Para 3 or the PM2 that has this big, huge blade. Um, this thumb ramp here kind of throws off the overall look. This one looks very good. A lot like a normal knife that just happens to have a spider hole. But sometimes Spydercos, like the PM2, the Para 3, and the Military, seems like the overall design and look of the knife is changed because of the spider hole. Or it is. Um, all of them are great knives, but, you know, some people don't prefer the look. Honestly, looks don't do that much for me. This stuff on the blade, this is, I just haven't felt like cleaning it. It's just like tape and cardboard residue. This is not anything permanent and with some rubbing alcohol it'll come right off but it's got a nice satin finish to this blade looks good the frn design looks nice nothing too fancy and yeah overall a good knife let's talk about the blade this blade is one of the best parts about this knife and i really like it i'm actually going to do it behind the thickness measurement i am back oh no my thing is dead Okay, my behind the thick, <laughs> my um, calipers are dead. Need to change the battery on it, but it's all good. This knife is thin behind the edge. I will say that. Thinner than your PM2. You can kind of get a feel for it just by going like that. This knife is much thinner than the PM2. I'd probably put it in between 10 and 15 thousandths behind the edge. And it has a very thin blade stock. Comparing that to the PM2. To a knife more similar, we'll do the native. Very thin blade stock, thin behind the edge. We know that's good, good cutting geometry. This thing is amazing at cutting and um, it really is fun to use because it is so thin. Sometimes with Spydercos like the Shaman, they're a little bit too thick for me. Um, this is one that could be repurposed or it could also be used for hard use, which a lot of people use it for that. Um, but for me, my hard use involves cutting tasks you know for my knives I'm not really prying or scraping with them my hard use would just be maybe cutting something more industrial more dirty like bags of mulch or rocks or something like that nothing crazy 
So for me, thinner behind the edge is 99% of the time better than something that is thicker behind the edge. And this knife does just that. Sometimes with like Protex and Benchmades, it's like a small, lightweight carry knife and it's too thick behind the edge, too thick at the stock. It just like, why? What's the purpose for it? Um, this one seems like they know exactly what the knife is supposed to be used for and it has done a great job. This edge I put on here is probably around 15 degrees, um, which is pretty low um, for, as an angle. It might even be lower. I sharpened freehand, so I don't really know, but it was about as low as I'm comfortable sharpening and it came out super sharp. If you guys um, are sharpeners, which I know a lot of you guys in the comments are, you know, it seems like when you sharpen a knife really at a low angle, you don't even have to pay attention that much. You're pretty much just like, yeah, don't scratch it up because you're going too low. Um, but it seems like I could mindlessly sharpen this knife and get it sharp. I recently sharpened a Benchmade 940 for one of my friends, and um, it was thicker behind the edge, probably around 20 to 25 thousandths. And I ended up getting it nice and sharp, but it felt like I had to be locked in, holding the angle perfect at all times. And um, it ended up sharpening up good, but when it is thicker behind the edge, when you're holding a higher angle, you really have to make sure that you are holding that angle right, or else it doesn't seem like it'll sharpen up as good. This is one of those knives, kind of like the Gale Bradley 2 or this um, Sasquatch from Alex Steingrabber that's so thin behind the edge, you could carry it dull and it'll still perform everything just fine. It might be a little bit annoying, you know, if you, um, I don't know, not as fun to use, but you really don't even need to have it that sharp to use and it just does a great job. Overall, this blade is awesome. The blade shape, super good. Um, the tip is nice and low. You aren't ever, you can do cuts like this. I do cuts like that a good bit and it works very well. Still has a little bit of belly for some slicing power. If we look at the choil here, is that in focus? So the choil, it does, it isn't sharpened all the way back. Sometimes Spyderco does that. Um, or pretty much every time they do it. I could fix that in a sharpening and it's really not that bad. Just kind of flatten it out a little bit, um, rubbing it perpendicular to a stone, which does absolutely kill your ears and make you wish you were never born. But you will fix it, remove a little bit of steel on there and then sharpen it out and it works good. An example of me doing it. I made a whole video on this if you guys are interested. I believe it's how to fix the choil area on a Spyderco. But an example is this native chief right here. I flattened it, so now I still have the edge. I don't know if you can tell that scratch pattern is the same from the base all the way throughout the rest of the knife. But overall, to sum up the blade, anything else I gotta say? I don't know. This blade is, oh, steel. I didn't even talk about XHP. If you guys have heard me talk about my Manix, I'm showing off all my Spydercos. Um, this one's also an XHP. I love XHP. One of the best all-around steels. If I had it, to, if I had to use XHP for the rest of my life, I'd be perfectly happy. I'd honestly rather see it over something like M390, just because usually the heat treat on XHP is better. I've heard XHP is similar to S45VN. Um, I do have S45VN on my Encosi. They are very different kinds of knives. Um, so I don't really know how much I can say that they're similar, but XHP, it's dropped up very well, used it for, I think it was like a week and a half, um, never, and then took it to a, I believe it's six micron gunny juice that I have, or maybe it's nine micron, something like that. It's dropped up well, um, and I'm still using it on that edge, and I'll probably drop it up soon and keep using it some more, and overall sharpens up very good no complaints, awesome steel, no rust or anything. Um, if, and if anyone's complaining about this steel, they're either a knife nut or they probably are just looking to complain about something. Um, for me, sharpening uh, the, I would say edge stability and ease of sharpening is probably the most important things to me when it comes to a knife steel. Also the hardness, but you can have a good hardness or a bad hardness depending on the steel, whatever. But this knife, super easy to sharpen. Haven't noticed any edge stability issues, no chipping or rolling or anything like that, even with the factory edge. So that is pretty impressive. But also, I'm using it on things like tape, cardboard, plastic, zip ties, stuff like that. 
um, I guess zip ties are plastic, but anyway, um, overall it is fine. No issues with the steel, probably a 10 out of 10 when it comes to the blade, maybe a 9.8 if we're talking about this choil area, um, but overall very good. So I just talked about the blade for like eight minutes, but anyway, let's get into the fit and finish and lock up. One thing that they did really good is knocking off the inside of this FRN. Actually, maybe it is kind of a little bit. No, but it, this is definitely much better um, than lots of other knives. If we're talking FRN from Golden Colorado Factory, like this native, definitely sharper on the inside. My Para 3 Lightweight was way sharper on the inside. Um, and Tai Chung does a really good job knocking off the inside of this FRN. Also on my Sage too. They just do a good job with it. Um, centering. Let's look at that. Would you look at that? It is centered. Uh, at least pretty centered. Maybe slightly off to the right. I don't know. Good enough for me. I'm not a snob when it comes to any of that. I haven't adjusted the pivot or anything. No blade play. Usually lockbacks you can... Yeah, I can wiggle a little bit up and down. Don't know if you can hear that, but I can do that on probably every lockback. No lock failure issue. No lock failure issues. Um, so yeah, that's all I care about. Um, lockbacks. Some people would be like, "Oh man, I wish this knife was a compression lock," which we usually see that with every single Spyderco that isn't a compression lock. Um, I like the compression lock too, but this knife, if it was a compression lock, it would be a lot thicker overall. Um, which may also be nice, but look at this pair of three, very thick in the handle. I mean, the back lock is very nice for a skinnier knife like this, and I don't think it needs to be changed. I'm someone who like back, I like back locks. If I can close it with one hand, I'm completely fine. And this one, you can do it like that or like that. No issues. So overall, I'm a fan of back locks. I think that they're solid. Um, compression locks are good too. Um, but I think they get a little bit too much hate, especially because I've never really had a back lock fail on me, never had a compression lock fail on me, but some people bring up the argument that they're not as strong. I have never, I've never had a lock fail on me other than a liner lock that failed on me from the factory, and it was from, like, some cheap Chinese budget knife company, so, Yeah. That's my thoughts about locks, not very picky. When it comes to ergonomics, this thing is overall pretty good. I mainly used it in this pinch grip, which it is super comfortable for that. I do a lot of cuts, like cutting flaps off a cardboard box. So I'd hold the flap and then cut like that. Yes, I am cutting towards me, but when your knife is sharp, you can control it. You're not going anything, you're not doing anything crazy. And overall, I've never cut myself in the abs or anything. Um, cutting towards myself so yeah and also maybe a little bit like this sometimes like that overall i am pinching it though mainly with my thumb and my pointer finger and it feels really good um when i did however i just said however that's weird um, but anyway when i use the knife like this it isn't as comfortable it's just very skinny um the and so it's kind of like holding on to a ruler sometimes it feels like um, and knives that are thicker, like a fixed blade or something, feels a lot better in the hand holding like this. But, you know, they are a lot thicker in the pocket and harder to carry. I'm someone who, I don't think the thickness matters. I've never been like, man, this knife is too thick in my pocket. But they were going for something with this knife. And so it is skinny and it does do that good. It is lightweight if you need it. Um, but... If it was a little thicker, that would probably be a little more comfortable for hard use cuts like this. Something like the Native be a lot better for that and just feels a lot better like that. Um, but you can just get the Native if you want, you know. <laughs> but overall, ergonomics, that's my main complaint. No issues with the FRN. I really like FRN as a material. Makes the knives cheaper. Um, G10 versus FRN, they're both polymer based, I believe. Actually, don't quote me on that because I'm not positive, but I've never had a handle scale break on me. I don't think you're gonna have to worry about anything. If you think it feels cheap, if you don't like that, I completely understand, but it doesn't really feel cheap to me. And so I overall like it because it's lightweight, gives good grip. Um, and if it's not sharp on the inside, I don't have any problems. Now let's talk about the carry. Carry's 
hard to beat on this. Uh, the wire pocket clip is really good. I like the wire clip. It does a great job. I don't feel it in the hand. I guess that's something I could say about the ergonomics. You could carry this in your lightest weight shorts possible and um, no issues with it. If you're someone who maybe wears athletic shorts a lot, um, this would be a great knife for it. I don't really... I'm not I, I'm not picky on a lot of things when it comes to knives. When it comes to blades, I'm very picky. But when it comes to carry and locking mechanisms and action, I don't care that much. Um, this knife does a great job carrying. You lose it in the pocket. It and it's also it's just very nice to carry around. Next, let's talk about the action on this. Action is solid, very smooth for a backlock. No gritty parts in it. Like I showed earlier, no blade play. Can I flick it out? No, I can't. Okay, I bet I can with some wrist. Okay, maybe a lot of wrist to flick it out. Spidey flick, no. So if you're a fidgeter, this knife's not for you. Um, but you probably already knew that because it is a back lock. I don't fidget with my knives. Not something I really do that much. If I did, I'd use something like my ZT that is drop shut and fun to play with. Um, I wouldn't pick up a spider co or maybe I would like a compression lock but I wouldn't pick up a back lock and so the action doesn't bother me I can open and close it one-handed fairly easily it would be easier to do with a compression lock I will say like that is easier to do than you might need a little bit of practice to be able to do it with one hand like that but I've never had any issues doing it in actual use so the action is overall good in my book the spring strength it's all right, it's pretty good actually. But I never, it's just a good thumb roll knife because it, it's not, back locks don't use a detent like a compression lock or a liner lock would. Um, so there isn't an, an, an initial weight to get across. It's just kind of like a gradual weight from, I can't talk, from this back spring that's spread across here. So that's why flicks don't work all that well as I do the flick this time but thumb rolls feel really good, kind of like an axis lock. You're fighting the spring tension, you're not fighting a detent ball. So this one you can flick out fine, but it is also very nice to thumb roll. You don't get a jump like you would if you're doing that. Anyway, that's all I got for the action. For the value, $116. Um, I don't know, if you're in the knife game, $116 for a knife is usually more budget now that's still a lot of money for a plastic knife that is small which is what a lot of people are going to say and I agree with that I will say since I've got this knife I've never even thought man I spent too much money on that and for Spydercos it is on the cheaper end so I would suggest it for the price I think it's good but if you are looking for a knife that's way cheaper you know you're probably not getting something made from Spyderco. You're probably looking at Chinese knives. That's fine. Any cutting tool that is quality is quality. So do what you want, I guess. But the price, it's good in my book. Um, there will be people that are like, yeah, that's way too expensive. I understand that. Sometimes like a dragonfly. This knife is in K390, so it's a little bit different. But these knives are very similar in price. This might be like 10 to 15 bucks cheaper. Uh, maybe 20 but so I would say this chaparral is a much better bang for your buck as knife guys would say um, the chaparral is better than dragonfly in that case and I'm happy with the price on it I would even suggest this to someone um, sometimes it's like a knife like the native chief here I think this was like 250 bucks I wouldn't suggest that because yeah, I don't know who I'm suggesting this knife to. Um, I don't think anyone would even think about buying it at that price, but I really like the knife. This one, I really like it, and I could suggest it. If someone wants a smaller, more lightweight knife, I think that's a solid price. This knife will last them for a really long time, and I think they would love it. So yeah, that's all I got today. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I am back in my regular setup so hopefully the video quality is better audio is better um, but still i haven't recorded a video in a couple months 
if you guys have noticed. Um, and so I am now, don't know how frequent the video uploads will be. Like I've been saying recently, just haven't been buying as many knives. I haven't really been as interested in the new knives that are coming out recently, but you know, I still love carrying knives and will continue to carry them. Oh no, I messed up pulling a knife out. I wanna show you guys this one knife before you go. The Spyderco, what's it called? Matriarch 2. Haven't done a video on it because I've never carried it, but I don't know, just looks pretty cool. Um, I would like, I think I'm gonna do a top 10 Spyderco video. So when I get around to that, I will do it. So that could be an upload idea. Haven't done a collection update in over, in a couple years, but I haven't really had that many more knives. So anyway, that's all I got for today. If you guys are still watching, you're awesome. 20 minutes into a knife video, that's impressive. But that's all I got today. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.